Can you picture your house alarm going off in the middle of the night, someone breaking in, and you confront them with this, with double out buckshot and a suppressor? Get fucked. Damn. Y'all ready for this? Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the NFA Review Channel. I have not reviewed in quite some time. I have some personal things going on in my life that have taken up all my time instead of uh, spending it here with you guys in the studio. So today we are gonna fix that, we're gonna catch up. We have a backlog of reviews to do on firearms and suppressors alike. So stay tuned, a lot of videos coming in the pipeline. Uh, also, if you've been living under a rock and you don't follow along on Instagram, I'm more active on there. Uh, check out my stories. Um, the vendor list for Suppress Fest 2024 this October is growing rather quickly. Uh, we're over halfway sold out of vendor space, which is cool. So that leads me to my next topic, Genesis Arms with their Gen 12 shotgun. Now, some of you guys remember seeing them. I did a booth interview with them at SHOT Show 2023, and their shotgun was featured in the previous our last installment of John Wick, the John Wick 4, I believe. Um, so really cool, we're gonna cover this in detail today. I have a couple uh, samples here today. I even have a JK RMS suppressor on this one that's all set up that we're gonna be uh, doing a lot of shooting with. So stay tuned, let's dive deep with Genesis Arms. guys now we'll just cover these real quick that I have in front of you uh, this one right here is a 7 inch SPS from Gen 12 this was actually at SHOT Show 23 this is on loan this has to go back uh, though we'll be shooting it today it's pretty badass it is a Raptor killer I'll show you some b-roll shots here uh, but considering I have a Ram TRX uh, I thought it'd be kind of funny to do a little skit with that I think I already did a YouTube short with that on the channel actually and then over here we have a seven inch woodland camo, uh, seven inch barrel SBS, our really clean looking gun there. Actually, I'm gonna lay these down so they don't fall while we're talking about this one. Now, this is a 10 and a half inch that I decided to go ahead and set up. So we got a little flat tuck earth EOTech on there, some Troy sights, sling. We got a scout light, probably just ruined my camera there. And then we have the uh, suppressor from JK Armit. So it's a fully set up suppressed 10 and a half inch SPS shotgun. So let's go ahead and cover the details guys and then we'll hit that range. So like I just mentioned, comes with a seven inch barreled version or a 10 and a half. You can order these as pistols or factory short barrel shotguns, which these three firearms are. Uh, while we're on the barrel, uh, it is threaded 1.375 by 24, which is why it fits so neatly with this shotgun suppressor from JK Armament. Don't go getting all excited and putting any suppressor on the end though, because you know, boom. Uh, your chamber is gonna be two and three quarter inch or three inch shells in 12 gauge. Your handguard is going to be uh, free floated with M-lock points around the clock there with a Picatinny on top, of course. It has a right side charging handle. It does reciprocate with the bolt. This is short recoil operated, and it's based off of a DPMS uh, 308 cartridge lower receiver with a short um, 308 weighted uh, buffer. Your trigger is gonna be hyperfire, and it comes in at a nice crisp, oh, safety. 3.5 pounds. Uh, not ambidextrous. Uh, it does use a uh, bad for the um, ma uh, manufacturer choice for the small parts. So we have a bad selector and then we have the uh, bolt catch here on the side. And then of course for our right-handed shooters, lucky us, we have the standard push button as well. Again, bad as well. And it does have um, pins with the hyperfire that are uh, set with torques so you're not gonna have any pens walk out under the recoil of the 12 gauge probably the exact reason why they did that um, your furniture 
have a Hogue rubberized grip on all three. This one, of course, they matched, and then you have a Hogue uh, recoil absorbing uh, stock. Actually, I'll show you some close-ups here. It, it's quite squishy, it's quite soft. And again, semi-automatic is gonna help with that recoil impulse into your shoulder, of course, but it's nice to have a little extra help there from the stock. On the stock, you'll also see the QD sling cup here. Uh, it's only on one side. It's probably, yeah, it's reversible. Okay, but if you are a Southpaw, you're gonna need to upgrade to some ambi controls here for the selector. As far as colors, you can see this one comes in that arid multicam or camo pattern, which is really trick, uh, which is why I decided to kind of set this one up the way I did uh, with the suppressor and spent the money on the site and everything. It's a pretty slick setup. And then of course you have M81 camo here that I showed you earlier. And then you can do custom jobs with them as well, like the Jurassic Park special. This is even engraved, by the way. Again, I'll show you some tight shots of this gun. It's pretty, it's pretty rad. It's pretty sad that I have to send it back, but I digress. So there you have it. It's a uh, magazine fed 12 gauge shotgun. They do sell longer magazines that hold 10 rounds. These are five round mags. Unfortunately, uh, they did not ship it with any drum mag or fun long round, uh, long, longer 10 round mags. So we'll have to make do today. I'll just have a bunch loaded up, ready to go. So what I want to do at the range is just run these things through the gauntlet, run some slugs, some buckshot, some bird shot through it, suppressed and unsuppressed, and really just have fun because uh, a magazine fed short barrel shotgun on an AR type platform, um, I'm not sure you could do much else but have fun with it. So let's go ahead and get to it. Before we get shooting, a quick word from our sponsor, Capital Armory. They're the nation's largest silencer dealer and have expanded their silencer shipping ability to multiple states with even more on the way. They can still ship directly to Texas residents, but they can now deliver silencers directly to your door for those in many other states. The process is simple and keeps everything in house. So there are no additional dealers, transfer fees, or headaches. They manage the entire process from start to finish to make your life easier. The process is very simple. Once you purchase a silencer online through their website, you'll be contacted to begin your online customer profile to provide them with fingerprints and other necessary information to complete your e-file form four. After the ATF approves your form, Capital Armory will initiate electronic transfer paperwork with you and your silencer will be mailed directly to your front door. And the best part is your customer profile only needs to be done once so you'll be ready to go for all future orders. Head to CapitalArmory.com today to learn more. All right, before we get started out here, I just want to touch base on the case. We didn't really cover it in the studio and uh, definitely deserves mention. Uh, so this is made by Savior Equipment for Genesis Arms. Everything's branded. Um, everything looks really, really high quality. Just repurposed a mag pouch here for the suppressor. But, uh, you know, it's nice. You can move the straps around and it even has a secondary compartment here. Kind of hard to do one-handed here. And I have the other seven inch barrel SBS in the, in the top part there. So just want to kind of give kudos to uh, Genesis Arms for just uh, not taking the cheap way out and just providing a nice, really high quality case for the firearm that you'll definitely actually use and not just throw in your closet. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get shooting. All right, nothing scientific here. Let's do a gauntlet here. So I have one ounce rifled slugs out of uh, two and three quarter inch shells here so we're going to shoot five five and this one actually fits seven rounds in the jurassic park version so let's start with the ten and a half then we'll do the seven with no sights and then we'll do the seven with sights let's not forget these all right these are right out of the box man there's just something about it all right Oh, 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 God dang. And we have lock back. That was five rounds. One out slugs, pinging that steel. Let's see if I can do that again with no sights. <laughs> A little high. Oh, let's see. Let's mismove this stock back here. There we go. 
I'll aim a little lower. Ooh, just to the right. All right, you definitely need sights, no lockback. And we have seven rounds out of this guy, the Raptor Killer. They, man, they even painted the buffer tube. Now that's attention to detail. All right, that's cool. So I'm gonna need some of these for all my mags. All right, now that we ran the gauntlet with some slugs, let's shoot suppressed with Fiocchi double lot buckshot. I pick one up. Oh, all right. This thing's a beast. That's sick. Didn't seat the mag all the way. Smoke ring. Ooh, that's some smoky ammo. That suppressor definitely lessened the recoil. Let's try some birdshot and see if it cycles with a really weak load. And let's see how this does. And we have lock back. Okay. Um, okay, I don't want you guys getting too bored. Me just standing in one spot. I'm gonna move the camera around. We're gonna we're gonna shoot from longer distance here and see just how accurate this is with such a short barrel. All right, this next bit we're gonna be shooting from about 60 yards. I'll be aiming at that steel right there. Got the camera right here. So that's the view you guys are about to see. And I got the gun set up over there. We're gonna be shooting slugs and buckshot. Let's see how accurate it is. All right, slugs. Yes. Oh. Interesting. Okay, you really gotta hold on to this thing so you don't uh, absorb any of that recoil, slow the bolt speed down too much. And wow, we have double lot buckshot, the military brown box stuff. Wow. <laughs> that is all grouping on that steel from 60 yards, like cantaloupe size. I'll show you when we're done. I'm gonna go grab the seven inch here with the irons. And I have slugs in this one. So not gonna be as forgiving in accuracy as the buckshot. Let's see if I can find the hold over here. First round hit. Second. Three. Oh, I only had. Oh, okay, I guess I didn't load it up all the way. But uh, yeah, that is impressive. Listen, if you can shoot this gun and not get a shit eating grin on your face, we just can't be friends. Let's, uh, let's just shoot some steel. Wow. Definitely need bigger mags. Whoop. Oh man, that thing is fun to shoot. Y'all didn't think I was done, did you? Hell no. Let's just mag dump this thing. Ho! Tango down, let's go. 
God, we need bigger mags. <laughs> that was awesome. So, yeah, every now and then it does or doesn't lock back. I mean, duly noted, but uh, wow, ability to shoot birdshot, buckshot, slugs on an AR-15 platform, suppressed, tickle me pink. All right, let's switch it up to the seven inch Jurassic Park gun. And uh, I loaded a bunch of random rounds in there I had bouncing around my ammo purse back there, my Coltac bag. So we got birdshot, bugshot, birdshot, buckshot, all alternating. So I am not going to shoot the steel this close with birdshot, because I don't feel like getting peppered to death. So I'm just gonna shoot the dirt here. And we'll just do a function check. I got a bunch of random rounds in here. And it ran them all like we knew it would. I just had to prove it to myself. All right. This is the last of my ammo. Let's make it count. Randomly loaded, birdshot and buckshot. <laughs> uh, you can tell what's what. Uh, we do have a malfunction here. No, I didn't. We're gonna have to cover that. Loading of the mags properly by Adam Johnson. There it goes. Yeah, we're gonna have to explain that one. Oh boy, you can tell what's bird and what's buckshot. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. All right, ending thoughts. Wow, let's start from the top. My favorite out of all of these is definitely the 10 and a half inch. I don't know if it's the proportions, whether or not it's just the color scheme or the, the fact I already have it set up, it's suppressed. That is one badass setup. So badass and works so well today, I'm most likely going to be using that for my bedside gun from now on. I mean, we can't argue the fact that we have an AR-15 platform that everybody watching is already used to that manual of arms, operation, uh, recoil impulses, magazine changes, yada, yada, yada. Um, to have that by your bed with an EOTech and a light and a suppressor and that 10 rounds and the longer mag of double-aught buckshot. I know they even have a drum mag coming. I think it's 15 to 20 rounds. I forget. Uh, it's still in process of being uh, made. Um, I mean, even a 10 round straight mag with a, with another laying close by, you know, if it's grouping at 60 yards, the size of a cantaloupe, I mean, the distance is in your home, getting double lot buckshot pellets into a target that fast and that accurate with no muzzle flash and just, there's really not much else out there that's going to be doing that. Okay. Could you do an, another SBS? Sure, but your most other SBSs out there that are factory are 14 inch barrels, and then you gotta throw a can on it. Even at this longer one here, you got the 10 and a half inch from itself, plus the suppressor is barely longer than a 14 inch unsuppressed factory SBS. That was a lot of words. Then you have the seven inch version you can throw a can on if you wanted to maintain even more compact setup. Um, really really neat product it's cool that it's in a like i said earlier a platform that everybody watching is used to shooting sorry there's like freaking bugs everywhere out here um really impressed um today we ran to the gauntlet of birdshot buckshot and slugs and outside of user error it ran 100 percent so two things to note one when you load these mags and i'll show you a little crappy b-roll here when you load the mag there is a little recess in the rear of the mag that has clearance for the rear rim of the shell. Push it down there, and then as you push the shell down, you push it backward into the back spine of the magazine, and you'll feel and hear a little click. That's when you know it is properly seated in the magazine. If you just insert it in and keep going, 
you'll have a failure to feed like I did earlier. That was not the gun's fault, that was 100% my fault. I, I noticed what I did as soon as I pulled the mag out to inspect it. Another thing, you have to really stay in this thing and just let yourself take all the recoil. Don't, don't uh, you know, move backwards to absorb that energy because you could slow this bolt speed down just enough to where it won't lock back on the last round in the magazine. Also, when it locks back, sometimes it will lock back and not go all the way rearward and the bolt head will be hanging just a little bit over the empty follower. So when you insert that fresh mag like I was doing and you hit the paddle release, that bolt head is already past the rim of the shell and it's not gonna strip it off the magazine. One way to negate that is always just get in the habit of doing a little overhand or uh, underhand AK load and you'll pull that bolt head back a uh, quarter to half an inch, release it, and you'll be good to go. Um, two little niggles there. It's just getting used to the platform because, I mean, you're talking a gigantic shell casing and a platform that typically does not take one. Um, but again, load the mags correctly, you'll be good to go, and just keep an eye on where that bolt head is and you'll be good to go. Other than that, these things ran remarkably well considering your different brands and ammo types that we had out here. We had two different sporting loads of, of bird shot. We had two different buck shots. Okay, so we had Remington Sport, Winchester Sport, Fiocchi buck shot, and um, this is the military Winchester green buck shot. And then we had Winchester slugs. A lot of different brands, a lot of different types of uh, loads we were shooting and it ran very well and very accurate. So, I mean, kudos to Genesis for coming to market with something like this. I mean, you can't deny how freaking badass this thing is. So, Huxworks, I know, is developing a suppressor for these. It's like a breacher type, you know, make a purchase on a uh, door frame to blow the hinges off type deal with suppression built in. I know it was marketed more towards military and police, but they're going to bring it to the civilian market, so hopefully we get it soon so we can review it here on the channel. Hawksworks, if you're watching, make that happen. <sighs> anyway, pretty cool product. If you guys have any questions, if I glossed over anything, um, please comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. I'm going to do my best to get Genesis Arms out to Suppress Fest. 2024. Uh, Huxworks is already attending. Maybe they can work something out there, but we definitely want these out there for you guys to demo in person. So don't take my word for it. I like it. It's a cool product for what it is. It's a freaking AR, AR platform shotgun. Okay, it's cool. It was in John Wick. All right, can't complain there. So you guys make up your own mind at home. This is my new bedside bitch for sure. So hope you guys enjoyed the review. Again, if you have any questions, please leave them below. I'll do my best and give it a thumbs up to give the big old middle finger to YouTube. See you guys next week.